Hello everyone. Welcome to EC Learning YouTube channel. I am Rajesh Shambhi. Today I am going to introduce you to CBSE Social Science Economics Chapter 1 Development. If you have not yet subscribed to my channel, please subscribe and share it. Now we can move on to our chapter of Economics Development. The first important question that we can expect from this chapter deals with the development goals of persons. Why do different persons have different notions of development? Different people have different notions of development because people are different and their life situations are entirely different. The development goals that people have are not only about better income but also about the important things in life. Now we can move on to other important question of this chapter and it is what is meant by per capita income. The average income which is the total income of the country divided by its total population is known as per capita income. In world development reports brought out by the World Bank this criterion is used in different in classifying countries. Countries with per capita income of uh, 12,056 US dollars per annum and above in 2017 are called rich countries and those with per capita income of 955 or less that is in US dollars are called low income countries. India comes in the category of low middle income countries because its per capita income as far as 2017 is concerned was just 1920 US dollars per annum. The rich countries including the countries of Middle East and certain other small countries are generally called developed countries. The income of the country is the income of all the residents of the country. This gives us the total income of the particular country or nation. The development of a country can generally be determined by its per capita income, its average literacy level and health status of its people. So, what is the main criterion used by the World Bank in classifying different countries and its limitations? These are usually being asked in CBSC exams. In this slide, we rather show the table. It is a comparative data representing the development index of two states. One is our, our state that is Kerala and it is being compared with that of Haryana. In Haryana, as per 2017 survey, the infant mortality rate per 1000 live births was 30 when compared to that of Kerala which is as low as 10. Once you look into the literacy rate as per the 2011 census, the Haryana's figure is 82 when compared to Kerala's 94. Then the net attendance ratio of students as far as secondary education uh, is concerned, as per the 2013-14 survey, the Haryana state stands at 61 when compared to our state that is 83. The per capita income, there you can see that we are falling a bit less when compared to that of Haryana, that is the figure of Kerala's per capita income as per 2015-16 survey stands at 1,63,475 rupees when compared to that of Haryana which stands at 1,80,174 rupees. The, we are more continuing with this, with this table <coughs> and I am explaining it in a more vivid way that is the per capita income of Haryana even though it is greater than that of Kerala that we have seen in the previous slide. The, we can see that the mortality rate is higher when compared to that of a state. That is, 30 infants are uh, uh, dying when in Haryana when compared to the that figure which is uh, which of Kerala is as low as 10. So we can understand that 
the income income by itself is not a completely adequate indicator of material goods and services that the citizens are able to use thus even though kerala has a low infant mortality rate it has adequate provisions of basic health and other educational facilities when compared to the state of haryana in the field of elementary education also kerala weighs high above haryana the other section or the other question that we can expect from this chapter is what do you mean by human development report that is even though the level of income is important yet it is an inadequate measure of the level of development we begin to think of other criteria health and education indicators are the most important indicators as far as human development report is concerned as per the report published by UNDP it compares various countries based on the educational levels of the people their health status and per capita income in this slide we can see a data of our country and its comparison with its with its neighbors like sri lanka myanmar pakistan nepal bangladesh etc the gross national income we call it gni as far as 2011 is concerned the figure of india is 6353 when compared to that of sri lanka which is 11000 as high as 11326 when we move on to other neighbors like pakistan the figure is 5331 myanmar 5567 nepal 2471 and and bangladesh is 3677 there we can again see that the life expectancy as per the 2017 statistics are concerned sri lanka topped the chart with with 71.5 when compared to india that is 68.8 and other countries are much below when compared to that of india in schooling as in the age of schooling also as per the 2017 figures are concerned sri lanka tops the table with 10.9 that's the average age of students who attend the school when the figure of india is low as low as 6.4 the gda of sri lanka is just 76 while that of india is 130 and myanmar pakistan and pakistan nepal etc have better figures thus we can understand that or we can come to the conclusion that A small country like Sri Lanka is much ahead of India in each and every aspect, and we have a very low rank as far as this data is concerned. So many improvements have to be implemented, and it has been suggested in calculating HDI, and many new components have been added to this report by prefixing human to development. That means it has made it very clear that what is important in development is its people, their health and well-being. now we can study about sustainable sustainability and development why is the issue of sustainable sustainability important for development we can study that the question of development or progress is perennial natural resources are replenished by nature as in the case of crops and plants however even these resources can be overused non renewable resources are those which will get exhausted after years of use we have a fixed stock on earth which cannot be replenished we do discover new sources that we were not earlier aware or known new sources in this way add to the stock however over time even this overuse or uh, over time will exhaust these resources continuing with this question the consequence of the environmental degradation is not confined to any particular region and hence our future is linked together sustainability of development is comparatively a new area of knowledge in which scientists economists philosophers and other social scientists are working together for achieving development natural resources which may be exhausted have to be preserved and for this a thorough planning and course of action has to be evolved it proves the fact that 
it rather supplements the command that all those we have inherited or the world itself we have inherited not from our forefathers but we have borrowed it from our children thus we have come to the climax of this chapter thank you all for watching this video if you have not subscribed please subscribe and share it thank you all